What's up everybody? In the comments of my last video I said that the next video will be an Assassin's Creed build, but sadly that's not the case. Come on, move! I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm currently in the apartment where I live with my girlfriend and for some reason she didn't like the idea of turning the dining table into a workbench. So the workshop you see in my videos is actually my father's, which means that I only ever get to spend a few days on a project when I'm visiting my parents. But sadly on the last trip I didn't have enough time to properly work on the new project so for this video I resorted to every knife making channel's bread and butter video making an everyday carry knife. I started off by drawing some different blade shapes and then decided to go with my first design. But something still bothered me a bit so I changed the handle to be a bit more rounded. And as you can see these got a strange color pattern to them because I wanted to try out making my own homemade micata. But more on that later. For now let's start by cutting out the template. Yeah, it's pretty small but I think for an EDC that's okay. And for the steel I've got this piece which is this steel. I'll try to find the English name but it's basically just some plain carbon steel that has a hardness of around 60 HRC after tempering. So let's see. But I think this would be quite nice. It's about four millimeters thick. And now I'm going to trace my template on it. If I can find some magnets. Oh my God. Okay, seems like I left the magnets at my place, so some glue has to do. This is just in case I accidentally ripped this one off. Alright, and now to cut it off. Okay, so these two are for the pins. These are just there for weight reduction and this one is actually behind the handle. I guess you could put a lanyard through there, but I actually just use it for this. Now I use my calipers on one of the holes to mark where the plunge line will be. Next I use the poor man's layout fluid to mark the bevels. With my last few knives I always ran into some problems when trying to grind the plunge line. When my father and I built this thing we both never used a big belt grinder before so we had no idea what's important about the design. We just went with what seemed most practical so we built it on a thick piece of plywood to keep everything in the same plane. But that meant that the left side is different to the right side of the grinding platen which causes the knife to bump into the frame when grinding up against this side. We tried to compensate that by cutting out a bit on the left but it's still a bit different because this side is rounded and that one is pretty sharp. So long story short, this time I tried filing out the plunge line by hand. It definitely works but I filed out a bit too much on one side and was left with this nasty scratch that I couldn't quite get out. All in all I'm still happy with the result so I'll probably make a jig to do it like this in the future. Now that the plunge line was set I could move over to the belt grinder to establish the bevels. Hardening seems to have worked and it looks to be flat as well. Before tempering I still tried spinning the knife on a flat surface. If it spins that means it's bent but as you can see it seems fine. 
Okay, now that the blade is taken care of, let's move over to the handle. As I've mentioned, I'm trying to make homemade micata with the blue and orange camo pattern. I got this idea from one of Walter Soros' videos about making micata. He made a camo handle pattern and I think it looked pretty neat, so I thought I'd give it a go as well. For the material, I've got some old chino pants and a polo shirt I just couldn't get myself to wear unironically. Then I cut them to small pieces. The size depends on how fine you want the pattern to be. And yes, I definitely have to get some better scissors. After I had roughly enough scraps, I put them all in a bag. To mix the epoxy resin, I cut and cleaned out this empty laundry detergent bottle. At first, I didn't mix enough, so I added some more. It has a working time of 30 to 45 minutes, so thankfully this time I wasn't in such a rush as usual. It's important to mix everything well so that all the pieces get completely soaked. When researching a bit, I came across one YouTube comment that said that he uses four nuts as stops so that the finished plate has an even height all the way across. I think that's a brilliant idea, but I definitely need to make a proper press if I want to do this again in the future. Because no matter how much weight I put on top of this bag, I just couldn't get the material to spread out enough to actually reach the nuts. So this is a bucket full of old batteries and even the added bucket of files couldn't get the job done. Now fast forward about 48 hours, this thing should be fully cured by now, so let's try and get it out the bag. <laughs> okay, unfortunately I can't really tell what's plastic bag and what's resin, so I think the back side is still on the plastic bag, but yeah, I mean it, it has some air bubbles. But I left it pretty thick, so I guess I can grind those out. I just did a test cut, and as you can see, there's yeah some places where there's just epoxy and no fabric. So I'm going to cut off the end here, where there's just epoxy, and then yeah, see how much of a blank I can get out of it. Okay, this should be about as flat as I can get it by hand. Now that the blade and bolster are done, I can finally glue everything together. As always, I'm using some 5 minute epoxy. After everything was cured, I finalized the handle shape, sanded everything and then tried oiling it. I wasn't very happy with how it looked with the Danish oil on, so I decided to try out a CA glue finish for the first time. I think I did a decent job, it certainly could be better, but I'll talk more about this finish after I tried it on a couple more knives. Next was sharpening. As you can see I left the edge pretty thick, because I wanted the knife to be sturdy rather than razor sharp. I think for an EDC that's more practical and as you can see it's still plenty sharp. With about 92 grams of weight I think this knife turned out nicely. Also I made a sheath prototype that I'm still experimenting with that I might post as a separate video once I'm done. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please leave a like or subscribe that would help me a lot. Now I'll finally shut up and show you the results. Have a good one. Was denn das jetzt hier? because I wanted the knife to be sturdy rather than razor. And yes, I definitely have to get some better scissors for the shop. Better scissors for the shop. Better scissors for the shop. She's shoe shop. I'm currently in the apartment where I live. Nee!